Hello YouTubes! Welcome back to yet another Quarantine Edition build and vlog. I myself am one third of the trio of terror. My buddies Vic Springston and David the Weird Kid Show channel are doing daily vlogs or builds just to kind of take everybody's minds off all the BS and the news and the drama. We want this to be your daily respite. You guys can just come out here and chill out, keep your head out of the real world for a couple of minutes, and just have some fun and enjoy your day. And kind of break up the monotony of all the stay indoors, stay at home stuff that you see on the news. So uh, today, I wanted to build a cannibal face mask. I know everybody's got old masks laying around under their shed, been laying on the floor for four years, all smashed in a corner. You know, wrinkled, disgusting, the latex is blown apart. You know, and you're just about to the point where you just want to pitch it. Like, it's an old mask, I'll never get any more use out of it. It's junk. Uh, save it. This is the perfect project for this. Um, I, myself, just like you guys, have old masks. Uh, this is an old witch mask I got from, I think, Halloween City when uh, they were here. Well, they skipped last year, but the year before last, a couple of years ago. It's been some years, but I think this is a, like a cheapy... $5 witch mask I got for like 5 bucks half price after Halloween. Um, I've never used it. I sort of foam filled the nose and the chin just to keep it from caving in. But uh, I wanted to take this old mask that I'm not going to use. Uh, I've got a cool swamp witch at home. This is before I built her. And I thought, I got this board left over from the 250th subscriber uh, video, which if you guys haven't joined, go watch my 250th subscriber video. Uh, I'm going to close the uh, entries, I think, uh, April 15th is a Wednesday. Uh, 2020 and guys enter and subscribe so I've got this leftover plaque from that video that I didn't use I've got a crusty old mask so I thought man let's make like a, 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 a headhunter cannibal face mask plaque almost like a trophy plaque so this is what my plan is we're gonna use this crusty old mask and we're gonna get some use out of this thing after all so here we go alrighty so we got our decrepit witch mask got our plaque and this is my favorite time I absolutely love distressing. So now is the time that we're going to whoop that plaque's ass. You guys can do this as much or as little as you want. Um, I think this is probably my specialty. Look at that. I really want to beat this thing unmercifully since it's going to be for a witch mask. Um, I got a special way. We're not going to burn it. We're not going to dye it. I'm going to try something else this time. No stain. Um, but man, that's already a good start. Look at that. Ooh, I'm already digging that. Just take a chunk right off that sunbitch. There we go. Ooh, there we go. Again, I got an old body hammer. It's got a little special dent head on it. I mean, this witch is probably going to take up the majority of this. So you want to keep most of your damage to the outside edge of the plaque. And that depends on you guys. Get a different mask, whatever. But all you need, base is a cheap board. And this is pine, so it'll distress real easy. Um, your mask, you just want to place it. So I know roughly I want to beat the edges of this thing. So I got my files. I got my pry bars. I just want to whip this thing's ass all the way around, and basically just get this thing ready to go. I'm even sandblast this thing. I don't know how crazy I'm going to be today. So that's what we got to do. You guys grab your board and beat the holy hell out of it. All right. It's been about 10 minutes. I have thoroughly whipped that ass. Uh, as a final step, what I always like to do is I've run 80 grit over this whole board. Uh, when it's hanging on the wall or if it's down low, you know, grandbabies and kids want to touch everything. So I don't want any, like, uh, burrs or little splinters on little hands so my last step after i 80 grit everything is just running a, a wire brush over everything especially pine it'll bust any of the loose stuff up and help smooth out some of the splinters and, and it actually gives a really nice texture to the to the soft uh, pine so we're gonna get some of this excess off i'm gonna wire brush this and we'll be ready to go ahead and put some color on this thing and i did go ahead and i added a little hanger on the back so this will be the bottom, this will be the top side. And then the cracks. Plus it makes it look more time-worn. You don't need to do a wire brush step, but I always like to. Look at all the little loose pieces coming up. Yeah, not a fan. All right, that is our done plaque. Let's move on. All right, so my plan for this plaque is to go ahead and use Rit dye to stain it. I use Rit dye in a lot of my stuff. I use it on my uh, my pumpkins. I use it on distressing clothes. I use it on everything. It's uh, cool stuff. It sticks to a lot of things. I've got some uh, emerald green. I thought it'd make a cool background. I got some uh, great stuff mixing cup. I always use these because there's no hole in there. So these are great to mix a little bit of stain or glue or anything together. I got a nasty stink old brush because I'm 
elbows deep in these. And this one, I don't know what I used it for last, so that's perfect. And we got lunch, raspberry zingers. So let's get going. Put our gloves on. If you don't put gloves on, man, this Rit dye will freaking stain. So you gotta be careful with it. Shake the hell out of it. You're also gonna need a nasty stank ass rag, which I'm elbows deep in also. And if this quarantine don't last much longer, this will be my goddamn toilet paper. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of dye. Ooh, man, that's, that is green. Ooh. This stuff seems to stick to clothes. It looks almost black in the cup. So let's see what happens when we put it on. Dip in, get our nasty old stink brush. Well, that's pretty dark pine green. Okay. Get all in there, soak it in. That's really kind of a cool effect. I think this stuff for this size is like three bucks at Walmart, I think. Uh, they got like 20 different colors. I don't know. All right, I'm going to get in all the little pits and cracks. Let's see. Take our stank-ass rag, wipe back. That's actually pretty nice. I kind of dig that. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to knock out this whole plaque, all the sides and everything. When I come back, we're going to start on that mask. All right, so I cheated a little bit. I got one coat of Rit Dye on, brushed it on, wiped it off my stank-ass nasty rag, and I put it under the heat gun. Because you know old cobwebs hates on freaking waiting. So this is what I got. It's going to lighten up, which is fine. At this point, you guys could go more. You could go less. Um, you could easily apply this stain in a water bottle. I always keep a water bottle with uh, multiple Rit Dyes in there for doing uh, projects and stuff like that for uh, distressing. Um, but you can see it's starting to lighten up a little bit, but I really actually kind of like this color. I mean, you guys use a piece of driftwood, a piece of construction lumber. I mean, you guys use any wood for this thing, but that Rit Dye soaks right in just like skin or like on fabric and stuff. So that's actually pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't even think I'm gonna clear the top. I think I'm gonna leave it uh, matte because that way the mask will stand out on there. And I might go ahead and just shoot just around the edges, just for the hell of it to darken it up a little bit, shoot some matte clear maybe, I don't know, uh, we'll see. But I'm gonna put that on the back burner and we're gonna go ahead and get this mask prepped. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna uh, mount it and frame it. All right, so we got our mask. Like I said, I had foam filled the nose and the chin a little bit way long time ago. It's actually pretty good shape, but I'll never use it. Um, it does have a little Made in Mexico on the bottom, which again, I hate. We can't even make freaking masks as Americans. Like, come on. Uh, but the edge is really clean. I don't like that. Um, I want it to look like it's been cut off some witch's face somewhere and then nailed up on this board like a trophy. So my favorite go-to is a good old soldering gun. Uh, you guys could use a wood burner. Uh, they have wood burners at Hobby Lobby for like six, seven, eight bucks. And that's what I usually use. But since I'm at the shop today, I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, soldering uh, iron. Um, you can trim the ma mask back as you want. Uh, I just want to show you guys what I do. Take this thing to heat up. Is she getting there? Okay, there we go. Again, you're going to want to do this in an open area. I'm in my paint booth, so once I kill the uh, once I kill the camera, I can turn the fan on. I just like to go ahead and hit every edge and make it look like it's starting to burn away in those uneven cuts. There we go. And I want to stretch the eye holes out a little bit so it looks like they... Uh, when they shave this off of her face, you know, the skin's starting to die and blacken. So I like to go over all the edges. I'll go ahead and I'll put a uh, slit in the mouth and I'll open that mouth. So that way it looks like, she, you know, she had a mouth cavity at one time. Makes it look more real, more ragged. Ooh, you can see the smoke coming off that thing. But a soldering gun is the best thing for this. Do her nostril holes. All right. So... I'm going to go ahead. Let's, ooh, this thing's really starting to smoke. I've got to turn the fan on in this booth. I'm going to go ahead and trim the mask back. I'm going to go ahead and grow, run it over all the edges with the, uh, the soldering iron and get this thing kind of trimmed back and blackened and dirty how I like it. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to paint the backside black so you don't get a reflection once it's on the board. But I'm going to go ugly this sucker up. And when I come back, I'll show you guys a trimmed up mask and we'll get ready to mount it on our board. Alrighty, so here's what the mask looks like after running a soldering iron over it. You want to hit every edge, eye hole, open the mouth. You want no clean edges. The ragged edges really sells it. Uh, man, it's horrible. You don't want to breathe those fumes in. 
Uh, you either want to do this outside or in the garage, but uh, that's what your finished product should look like. That's what we look like on the outside. She's all ragged. And it looks like somebody cut it off of uh, the witch's uh, face when she was alive. So I'm really happy with that. We're going to go ahead and black out the back of this mask. I'm going to throw the heat gun on it, and then we're going to mount it to the plaque. This way you don't see any reflection back there. Don't worry about overspray. We just want to black it out to hide any reflection off the plaque or when somebody's looking at it. So we're good. All right, I'm going to put this on the heat gun, under the heat gun, and then we're going to mount this on the plaque. All right, now we got our plaque laid out. We got our mask ready to go. It's all blacked out. Now we take a zinger break. Mmm, zingers. Mm, I'm going to eat this, and then we're going to go mount a mask. Okay, this segment has been brought to you by Dolly Madison. Let's go. All right, now's the fun part. Kind of place your mask where you want it. I've got a bunch of, uh, oh, like decorative uh, furniture tacks. You guys can basically use anything. You could use tacks. You could use, uh, you could use rusty nails. That would be awesome. You could use, uh, if you were doing like a modern day haunt, you could do a staple gun and just staple them in all the way around. Uh, how you mount it is really up to you. I don't use any glue on mine. He's going to be straight on the board so it'll want to pull up and push away like in the summertime if it gets hot and cold. I think that's cool. So I'm going to use the, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the forehead and kind of get it pinned where I want it. I think that'll be a good starting place. A little gooey from the paint. Tap that in. Boom. All right. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. Let's see, maybe one here. All right, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of stretch and pull. I'm going to put a thumbtack in, and then I'm going to go ahead and add the last minute details. We'll call this guy done and hang it on a wall. All right, I'm adding in those little final details. Went ahead and found a piece of, uh, I think that's 320 grit sandpaper on the floor. Went ahead and scuffed those nail heads. I scuffed the edge of the mask down where it looks like they were cutting away at her. Just to kind of bring them edges down. Everything looks good. She looks kind of rough. Looks like dead skin. I'm happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and add one last detail. <clears throat> I've got an acid brush. Can't see the background. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these little strands off the acid brush, and I want to glue them into her moles and in her nostrils. Like you guys ever hear about when you buy a, a severed, or not a severed head, a shrunken head on the, uh, on the, uh, the aftermarket? The, only, the real reason you can tell a, a, a shrunken head between a fake shrunken head and a real shrunken head is nose hairs. So I'm going to plug some hairs in her. I'm going to pop a couple of little... Holes in her warts, gluing some hairs, gluing some nose hairs, and we'll call her done, man. She's ready to hang on a wall, which is a cheap old leftover mask. So let me put the details in, and I'll show you the final result. All right. I got the hair done. You can see all her little nostril hairs and stuff. I just went ahead and glued them in with some E6000. I cut, uh, cut them off of the uh, acid brush, glued them into place. I hit them with a heat gun to wrinkle them up a little bit, let them die back. I think my last step is going to be hitting the outside edge with just some matte clear. Just to kind of seal it up a little bit. Again, it ain't got to be perfect. It ain't got to be pretty. You all know this channel ain't about pretty. All right. Just like that. All right. Let's go hang this girl on the door and take a last look at it. Alright, so here she is. This is the Cannibal Face Mask Trophy. Um, just a great way to fix up an old mask, something that's ruined or cracked or old or it's been smashed down in a bin so long and you can never get it straight again. Hey, burn it up, cut it apart, mount it on a plaque, make a whole damn wall of them. I mean, that's a super fix for an old cheap mask. A great way to recycle it. Um, I'm really happy with it. Maybe I'll do another one some other time. I've got a witch, maybe like the Human Skin Face Mask. So. If you guys got your old masks, it's a great way to upcycle it. Thanks for watching and hanging out. Hope you guys are doing okay during this quarantine time. Me and the Weird Kid and uh, Vic Springson, we're doubling down and putting out daily stuff for everybody. So you guys should hopefully have something to watch, take you away from the world for a little bit. So you guys hang in there and make some projects and use some of this downtime to make creepy stuff.
Good stuff, man. Good times. You guys, thanks for watching.